Hi, it's Paul here from selfhelpforlife.com and in today's video I'm going to talk about why people stay stuck and how to move your life forward. So it seems like we have some kind of internal thermostat or set point or paradigm as Bob Proctor likes to call it. So when I was in the UK we used to have central heating and I had a thermostat. So if the room got too cold, the central heating would come on. And if the room got too warm, the central heating would go off. So the thermostat kept the temperature at a comfortable level. And it seems that it's like that with our lives as well. We want to stay, or our unconscious minds want us to keep at a comfortable level. We don't want to have too much change too quickly, okay? So an example could be you want to lose weight. Okay, and this could be due to some kind of away from motivation. Maybe the doctor's told you need to lose weight. Maybe you're worried about getting some kind of diseases or maybe it's just a case that you're not fitting into your clothes or something like that. So you start eating healthily, you do some exercise and your weight reduces. And you do that and then that starts to feel a bit different from what you're used to. So you start to, and, and also that motivation uh, to lose weight has reduced a bit because you've actually achieved some of that. Then you start to have some treats and the weight starts to come back. And before you realize you're back at the same set point as you were before. Or you go to some kind of seminar, maybe a Tony Robbins seminar and you get all fired up and then you make some positive changes. But as the seminar fades into the distance, the motivation drops and you go back to normal. You know, the same thing could happen with you know, reading a particular book, something like that. So it seems like our unconscious mind wants to keep us safe. It doesn't want too much change too quickly. And I think the set point of thermostat analogy as well could explain why you know, most lottery winners lose all the money because winning that money, winning a million dollars or whatever it is, um, is so outside their comfort zone that their unconscious mind starts to sabotage that so they end up over time losing that money and going back to where they were which was comfortable. Now the reason that people stay stuck or stay in their comfort zone or at their set point or paradigm is basically fear and three specific types of fear and I learned these from Brendan Burchard and I'm going to cover these three fears now and also talk about ways to think differently so that these fears are less intense or even positive. So the first one is fear of loss. So whenever we make any kind of change in life, there's always a fear that we might lose something that we actually like at the moment. So this could be a person, could be a job, could be some kind of security, could be foods that you love. It could be uh, time out doing fun things, all those kind of things. So I'll give you some specific examples. Let's say you have a goal to lose weight. So some of the things that you could lose could be foods that you really enjoy eating, foods that you love. It could be favorite clothes that you'll no longer fit into when you lose the weight. It could be time because you'll need to put more time into exercising or preparing healthy foods. If you're developing some kind of business or side hustle that you're doing part time, uh, it could be that you need to sacrifice time with your friends or with your family to build that business. Maybe you'll say no to invites so your social life is affected. Um, maybe you'll need to spend some money to develop that business so you can't spend that money on something else. If that side business becomes full time, then you're going to lose the certainty and security of a full time regular job. You might also sacrifice things like weekend lions to spend that time building your business. If you're a single person wanting a relationship, then some of the things you could lose would be time with friends. If you meet someone, you could lose your independence. If you're focusing on mastering a sport, hobby or a musical instrument, you would be sacrificing or losing potentially time with friends. Uh, if it's a sport, you might need to have a specific diet to master that sport so, sport, so you could uh, lose uh, access to certain foods. Maybe you have to stop or reduce alcohol to maintain that performance. So there's a few things you could lose there as well. And if you're giving up some kind of addiction like smoking, you know, uh, one thing you might lose is that nice having that smoking break and that feeling of calmness that comes from that. Okay, so whatever it is you're trying to change, there will be some things that you're going to lose. Okay, 
So how do you get around that is to change the focus, not so much on what you're gonna lose, but to what you're gonna gain instead. So in the case of weight loss, what you're gonna gain is you're gonna fit into your clothes better. You're gonna have more energy. You're gonna feel more confident about your body. And you're gonna reduce the chances of any nasty diseases or problems later in life. If you're developing some kind of business or side hustle, then the, it could be that you're doing something for yourself rather than for a, an employer. It could be the additional income that's coming from that. It could be the potential for it to replace your job in the future. Maybe it's your retirement plan. Maybe it's being able to have the money to have better holidays or to pay off your mortgage early. If it's a relationship, um, then you know, focus on being in love, making new friends through your partner. Uh, sharing your life with someone else, you know, and longer term getting married, having kids, that kind of thing. And if it's mastering a sport, a hobby or a musical instrument, then focus on the satisfaction that's going to come from winning, the enjoyment of that, the making something, achieving something, the creativity. And if it's giving up an addiction such as smoking, then focusing on breathing clean air, your health improving, smelling nice and spending that money on other things. Okay, so that fear of loss, I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with that, with a few changes I've made. So about four or five years ago, I had a few health niggles that made me sort of change a few things in my life. And uh, I remember, you know, my diet wasn't the best at that time. And slowly, um, and I did miss certain foods and I still do a little bit now, but I did slowly focus on changing my diet quite a bit. And now I'm a lot healthier and have a lot more energy than I used to have. Used to drink quite a lot as well. I've reduced that a lot over time. Again, for me, it's just been slowly and steadily just making little changes, okay? Uh, when I started Self Help for Life and my hypnotherapy business as well, I sacrificed a lot of time with friends and a lot of social interaction to do that. Okay, and, and I miss that and I still do sometimes as well. I, I probably don't spend as much time with friends as I really like to. Um, but I have gained, you know, new friends and well, new friends, new colleagues that I've met on the internet and other parts of the world. Um, and I've gained, you know, a, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge as well and a lot of satisfaction. When I was a lot younger at school, I played the French horn and I actually got pretty good at the French horn. And um, but while I was doing lots of rehearsals and practicing, you know, I wasn't going out with the lads um, in town and meeting girls and doing the kind of things that a lot of people, you know, between sort of 15, 18, 19 were doing. I was actually quite, um, quite shy and I was quite isolated and I just had musical friends and that was about it. So, you know, there's things I missed out there, but I've achieved other things as a result of that. OK, so that's the first fear, the fear of loss. So the second fear is fear of the work involved to change or fear of the process. OK, so this could be a fear of discomfort over learning new things, over having to change as a person, doing something that you've never done before. OK, so uh, in the terms of weight loss or just improving your physical health generally, one of the things you might need to do is go to different shops, um, like a health food shop, for instance. And, and again, for me, you know, five or six years ago now, I went to my first health food shop. And I remember going in there, it was quite a dark shop and the, the staff seemed a bit strange in some way. And and I'm looking at all these different things and, and actually it seemed quite overwhelming and, and quite uncomfortable really. Um, but again, I just um, started to focus more on how interesting it was to sort of start working with these new foods and these new things and uh, and over time you know now i'm extremely comfortable in health food shops and have no problems at all but it was you know it was it was difficult at the time um you know and again if you're focusing on health or weight loss it might be different cooking using different ingredients so again you'll be learning new recipes so that's going to take some time and a learning curve and a lot of people have fear over that learning that as well or if it's a new exercise program, again, it could be fear over learning that and um, you know just getting good at that exercise program. <clears throat> if you're developing some kind of business like myself with developing Self Out for Life and my hypnotherapy business, you know, for me, it was learning lots of new things. It was learning technology. It was learning about marketing, um, obviously learning about the skills I'm using as well in the case of hypnotherapy particularly. Um, and making mistakes and, and a lot of overwhelm as well. You know, when, when you're learning something new, especially in business, there's so many different ways of doing things. There's so many things you can do and also having that um, overwhelm that often comes with it. If you're single and you want a relationship, 
you might have a fear over the whole process of dating, okay, of meeting people, the fear of rejection that comes from that, just doing things that are uncomfortable. If you're mastering a sport, a hobby, or a musical instrument, you know, it's going to be the new techniques you're learning, approaching it differently, maybe physical discomfort, in, especially in the case of sport, if you're needing to really push yourself. Um, and if it's something giving up an addiction like smoking, it could be, you know, withdrawal symptoms, which can be quite real um, as your body goes through a healing crisis. And um, again, just giving you some personal experience with that. Um, for me, I think fear of the process has been quite a biggie for me. And when I first started my hypnotherapy business and I just started advertising and I, I got my first phone call, okay, and I was like, I, I could sort of tell from the number that it wasn't someone I recognized and, and I sort of froze, I thought, what do I do? And so I sent the call to voicemail. And I listened to the voicemail realized it was my first inquiry and it probably took me about an hour before I actually picked up the phone and actually responded and, and talked to that person and that person made a booking. That was very scary because I was doing something I'd never done before, okay? And then sure enough, that person then came along and became my first paid hypnotherapy client. Now I'd worked with a lot of friends before, but this is the first person I've worked with professionally very very uncomfortable experience okay but i had to go through that experience to get to where i am now um but there's quite a lot of fear over that you know and people will procrastinate on those kind of things okay and i'm sure there's many other examples i could think of but there were two that came to mind and again the solution with this is always to change your focus okay so with that first inquiry um, I knew that that was the stage I needed to go through. I obviously wanted to have the first booking, so focusing on that, changing my focus to how I can help that person. Again, when that person came um, for the session, again, just changing my focus to how I can help that person, reminding myself that I've done this 50 or 60 times with friends, and it's no real different except for the bit at the end where I take the money. Um, so yeah, so that's um, changing the focus. So other areas that say with the health food shop idea, if you're starting to you know explore different foods um, you know to see it as something that's new and exciting you know the chance to taste different things and learn about your body and your health as well you know if it's a business then um, see that learning as a continuation of a lifelong learning process you know think of it as, as like doing a degree for free or at a low cost you know um, and also think about when you're learning the, the things for a new business that you're learning what you need to know you're not learning what academics think you need to know at university. So you can just focus on the things that are really important. Um, in a relationship situation, you know, focusing on that whole dating process and that fear of rejection. I mean, that's something that's going to uh, make you much more confident in life generally. It's going to make you more resilient. You're going to meet lots of people in the process. You're going to improve your people skills, which you can then use in lots of other areas of your life as well. And I think with this one, this fear of the work involved, the change, the fear of the process. There's kind of two things I think going on here. There's comfort, which is where you are now. OK, where you are now is comfortable. Doing the things to make a change is not comfortable. OK, but when you do the changes, you get satisfaction. So it's like you can have comfort or you can have satisfaction, but you can't really have both. OK, because where you are now is comfortable, but if you want to achieve some kind of goal in life, then you're not going to be feeling satisfied unless you achieve it. OK, so getting over that comfort, being comfortable with discomfort leads you to have that longer term satisfaction and fulfillment later on. OK, so the third one is fear of not getting the outcome. And this is a biggie. I think a biggie for me and a biggie for lots of people. Let's say you do all these things. You do all these things which mean that you have to sacrifice other parts of your life and you don't get the results. You know, you do things because you want a better lifestyle, whether it's more money by having a business or you're losing weight or these things that are going to give you more enjoyment and more satisfaction over time. But what happens if, if that doesn't happen? What happens if you fail? What happens if you put all that time in and nothing changes? OK, um, because anything you do in life is a risk. OK, so how do you deal with that? Well, I think there's a few different ways. I think one is to focus on the process. OK, so in the case of weight loss, you know, the, just the act of exercising and trying different foods and finding that actually some of those foods are actually really tasty. And <clears throat> and that's certainly what I've found now. I mean, I never was really into salads, but now 
I really love certain types of salads and find them very much more tasty. And some of those old foods that I used to eat all the time, like fish and chips and things like that, I really don't like them anymore. I, I would never really choose them now. Now, with an online business, you know, focusing on the process could be focusing on the learning of the new skills and how those skills are going to help you in other areas of life. I mean, I'm, I'm very confident that just doing these videos and the blog, the written and the verbal communication skills is going to have huge benefits in other aspects of my life and that kind of thing. So, you know, just focusing on how those skills are going to help you, even if the business wasn't successful, you're still going to learn some great skills that are going to stand you in good stead for whatever you decide to do next. And I think also believing that if you put in the effort, it will happen, okay? With whatever you do, if you do enough of the right things, results will start to happen. You know, some things are a bit of a numbers game, you know, like dating is certainly a numbers game. I think an online business is to some degree as well. The more blog articles you write, the more videos you do, the more that one of those videos is likely to go viral or just become very popular and get you noticed. Again, with health, you know, maybe you're working on um, you know, some natural remedies for some kind of health condition. If you keep focusing on that and you keep working with different approaches, eventually you're going to find something that's going to work for you. But it's just being consistent and keeping at that. And, and we all know that with particularly with weight loss, um, that if you do the right things, you eat the right foods and you do the right amount of exercise, then you're pretty much guaranteed to lose that weight anyway. So it's not quite as risky as maybe something like running a business, something like that. Um, another thing that really helps um, with this fear of not getting the outcome is dreaming and visualizing about what you want. Um, because by doing that, you're starting to use the powers of attraction. You're starting to um, attract that into your life, increase your vibration level, that kind of thing. So in the case of weight loss, if you're focusing and visualizing, you know, feeling fit, happy, vibrant, enjoying tasty new food, enjoying shopping for clothes that's going to fit your new body, maybe going to shops that you couldn't go to before because now you're at the, the weight where you can go to some of these maybe more fashionable shops, that kind of thing. You know, if it's business, then focusing on being your own boss, having that long-term passive income, if that's that kind of business, if it's like an online business, or just doing what you love, just focusing on that. Um, and if it's something like quitting smoking, then, um, you know, feeling healthy, happy, and in control of your life, those kind of things. So just as a quick recap then, there are three fears that stop you moving forward. The fear of loss, what you're going to lose by making some kind of change. The fear of the process, what you're going to need to do and how you need to change as a person to do it. And then the fear of not getting the outcome. So if you do all those things and then you don't get the outcome, you're no better off than you were before. So they're the three fears and I've covered a few different ways um, to help you deal and look at those in different ways. I've shared some personal experiences of mine as well in relation to those fears. So I think really in summary, be aware of these fears, okay, and then reframe and change your perception. So think about them differently. Also focus on what you want. When you have a really strong why, it's a lot easier to work with these fears. They seem less important. Remember to enjoy the process. Sometimes the learning is just as important as the reward. And also trust that the results will come. Trust in your own ability uh, to get those results to come. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And click the bell notification. That way you'll get notified whenever I uh, release new videos, which at the moment are about one a week. And if you haven't already, do check out my website. That is selfhelpforlife.com. On my website, you will see the written versions of most of these videos. Also links to my podcast, which is basically the audio versions of these YouTube videos. Um, so if you prefer to listen rather than watch, the podcast is great for that. And uh, also there's written versions to most of the articles as well. You can also check out um, the content I do on social media. I do a lot of a very visual content on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, great little reminders just to help you uh, on a daily basis to get this information and keep this uh, information at the forefront of your mind. So I'd like to thank you again for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to sharing more great content with you very soon. Bye for now.